Hey there, welcome to this fully narrated real-time tutorial where I'm going to go over my process for creating a sketchy character illustration that's going to be timed in Photoshop using the simple line and color process that I use for everything. This is going to be an opportunity for me to share with you my process in a raw, unedited fashion. And we're going to do a timed drawing in this case. So let's jump in and get started. All right, just quickly, my name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for 20 years, and I'm here on this channel, The Drawing Codex, to help you draw cool stuff from your imagination, to embrace the challenge of drawing, and to master the craft of line and color illustration. As I said, this is gonna be an unedited, fully narrated, real-time tutorial. It's not gonna be, as I always say, full of YouTube jokes and fancy slick editing. This is laid back. You can hang out with me. We can draw some stuff. You can see how I do this. And through the process, I'll, you know, just sort of talk you through what's going on in my mind and, you know, any sort of overall art tips and things I can share with you related to the type of image that I'm creating here. Now, if you are interested in the style that I'm using here, the line and color comic book manga bon dessiné style where we create worlds with simple line and color in Photoshop, go check out my free quick start guide. It goes over all of the tools and techniques and tips that I use to create this type of image. It's free, link will be in the description. All right, let's jump in and get started. So I have a little bit of an idea here and there's two prongs that add that to that idea. Um, and I'm, I'm a little bit tongue tied today. I don't know, I don't know why, but uh, again, apologies for, for that. What I'm gonna do is draw some more of these goblin creatures. Now, this is something that I sort of started a while back. I think this was a sketchbook series of drawings that I did around sort of 2016, 17. And I was just drawing these in my sketchbook because I think I was working on a comic book at the time, a pitch for a comic book that was to do with these kind of goblins. And so I was just playing around with designs. And I, and I liked a lot of the stuff that I came up with. I, I thought it was good. And I think, uh, you know, sort of last year I did this illustration and I kind of liked how I was blending some of these ideas with, with this style. So my goal is basically to transfer some of the designs and the range of ideas that I was playing with sort of back then and pick up that thread, but uh, do it in, uh, you know, with color using a simplified sort of line and color process. Now, I do actually find there's a lot of value to doing this kind of just sort of creating characters and looking at different projects like this and kind of chipping away at them. I've got a lot of other stuff I'm working on at the moment, but what I find is when I kind of just build stuff and build characters, these things kind of percolate in my mind and it's a lot easier if I do actually want to make something from this, if, if I do want to sort of revisit that pitch and, and, you know, go back and look at these characters. It's a lot easier if I've sort of got them there and that they were created without that pressure of sort of thinking about the story at the time. So I do find there's a lot of value to that. Um, it, it's, it's often where, you know, right now it kind of just seems like random sort of stuff, but, but um, I think over time we kind of build a, a repertoire and a warehouse of ideas and characters and things that we can pull from later. The second thing I'm going to do here is time these drawings. So I've sort of got an idea of about 40 to 45 minutes that I'm going to play with. And um, I think this is a really important thing to do when you're, uh, you know, e even when you, if you're very advanced, I think it's still very useful to do, but it's, it's something that really did help me early on when I was starting out to just kind of get into the flow and see, you know, what we can do. It, it takes away that critical questioning idea in your head of like, is this good enough? You know, which again, I often sort of struggle with. Um, and it, it becomes more about, well, what's the best thing we can do in a set amount of time? Anyway, I don't want to talk about it too much more. We should uh, jump in and um, have a go. So I'm just going to set that timer and um, you'll be able to hear it go. I've sort of just got one of those sort of electrical 
um, you know, digital sort of timers and I've set it for 15 minutes. So the idea here is that it will probably go off three times and that will give me a good idea of, you know, the framework of, of the, of the, you know, overall sketch. All right. So what I might do actually is I'll put a few of these on separate screen. And, and this guy was like the, the, I sort of called him at the time, the toad goblin. And that's kind of, that's sort of what I want to play around with is, is the, 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 the character with the kind of gigantic head and, and tiny little eyes, just because that sort of seems fun. So I've got, if I get the right brush, I'm just going to use this kind of round brush, hit black. Let's uh, lower the opacity quite a bit. So again, we're sort of just creeping up on it. And um, again, we're, we're already sort of a minute down. What I'm after here is to break up this process into three main parts. And this is something that, you know, you, you kind of have to work with when you're doing your particular process and, you know, how much time you want to spend. Again, 45, there's nothing magic about any particular sort of time, time there. Um, you know, it's just kind of like whatever fits into your life. Um, I find that sort of 40 minute thing is, is kind of like, it's, it's sort of good enough and big enough for me to be able to maybe fit something interesting in. Um, but not, you know, not long enough for me to sort of move into the territory where I'm going to start thinking about, you know, look, I've invested a lot of time here, you know, is this, is this worth it? You know, um, I think that's often the danger that I run into. So finding the right time for the right type of scope is, is super important. It's not like you just sort of can just set a timer and then say, cool, I'll just do that. You know, the, the first few times you probably mess it up, you know, you probably run out of time or end up with something that's look quite frankly is just not up to, to scratch based on you know what what your you know what you know you can do but over time the more that you work on this that the better you get at kind of gauging that time and, and figuring out you know what what you can do and you know how confident you are in getting that stuff happening um, but yeah so that's basically the idea and this is a case where, yeah, I've sort of got about, so I've basically got about, you know, another 10 minutes to kind of work out the sketch or the drawing sort of phase, right? And uh, which again is, is pretty sort of quick and, you know, but, but, not, but not that quick. We've got enough time to play around, right? Again, this guy's got this kind of tail. Let's flip, you know, just check that we're on the right kind of framework. And then, okay, let's think rough perspective grid. I feel like this head is not working for many reasons. I feel like it needs to be squished down, could be a little bit bigger. Now I'm going to go into warp. Again, pushing it around. And I use this because, you know, time's, time's short, you know, and trying to figure out how to sort of get his head to feel squished like that kind of original one did and um, I think uh, if you are interested in drawing comics this is also an excellent task to get you in the speed and the, 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 the framework the mindset for how fast you you, you might actually want to think about drawing your characters you know if you sit there painstakingly designing <laughs> stuff you know and and then you try and execute that and draw a page what, what you might find is that you know it just takes too long whereas if we think about building the character design and, and the process and, and all of that stuff quickly from the beginning i i think that often you know is is more likely to yield a um uh, a design and, and, a, and a result that is gonna um be functional in a comic book setting let's say right, so we've got this kind of big nose um, and again he's going to sort of have like a set of sort of teeth in here All right that's where we're going to sort of see them I don't know how much of that we're going to see and actually it feels like these sort of teeth are a little bit a little bit further in 
Right, so his kind of mouth is a, a lot smaller than its kind of overall head. Flip again. Oh, that was. I hit the wrong button. On my keyboard shortcuts. So I have all the F keys um, sort of bound to something F1, F2, F3. Um, F6 is flip canvas. Uh, F7 is um, sort of airbrush tool. Right, so I have a lot of the. If you, that's why you don't you don't see me sort of clicking brushes and stuff like that over here, um, especially when I'm doing these narrate real time narrated sort of things. I'm trying to go fast, um, and again here I'm trying to go sort of even, even faster. Yeah, so uh, that, that's why again you accidentally hit the wrong the wrong key. Um, so again, one of the things he kind of has is like these arms are like really sort of spread out, right? He kind of has this sort of like bodybuilder <laughs> sort of look, right? With these, you know, you see those like really, like, you know, the, the top um, or more like sort of the strong man sort of look, right? Where kind of the, the lats are like so big, you know, the lats at the back, um, you know, kind of like pushes out the arms. Yeah, it's kind of like too, too big to um, actually even sort of hold your arms properly. All right. Now, again, I'm trying to sort of think about, you know, what sort of structure can I add while still, you know, keeping these lines pretty, pretty kind of simple. And I do want to play around with, again, keeping this sort of muscle that he's got a little bit more in that strong man um, vein. All right. So, again, let's, uh, I've sort of got, I've got line here again, horizon line, probably somewhere around there. Right, that's going around here again. These eyes meet up around there. That feels okay to me. Got little hands in in the um in that original drawing. Right, he had pretty like little tiny hands. Now again, I, I have a habit of sort of making the you know tilting the body a little bit, and again moving this arm down when I'm doing this type of pose. I'm gonna try and control that a little bit more. So let's think about where that shoulder is, right? So the shoulders here, let's think about where that sort of bicep is. So again, right, we've sort of got something a little bit more like this. Bicep there, right, forearm there, bump, and shoulder is kind of up here. And so you'll often see me do that as well, right? So I, I kind of like, you know, I sort of traced it or I, I drew through Right, I'm like, yeah, that's probably where it would be. But the only thing I need to draw here is that shoulder in there. So I'll just put that in, you know, just uh, that is one of those advantages of um, digital. Just try it, undo it, and then put in the thing you need. Um, yeah, let's move that around. Uh, again, I'm just doing that by eye. If, if you get stuck, uh, you wouldn't want to be doing this when you're trying to um, go quickly, but we can think about, let's drop, um, let's sort of think about where center is, right? Center between those legs, right? There's like center probably where the, the head is kind of over there. And then this gives us a pretty good indication of like, where is that hand sitting on the ground? Um, feels like, again, it's sort of going to be out from the, maybe again, just kind of like out that way, right? Maybe somewhere here. And then we can kind of, again, this is just full-on guesstimation, right? But I can kind of, you know, maybe think about where, if we were to cast light down, where the shadow or um, positioning of that hand is going to be relative to the ground plane, right? And again, that sort of allows me to think about that space, right? And, and position that, that stuff a little bit better. Again, I think it was pretty, I was eyeballing it okay to begin with. Um, but yeah, that, that is something you can do if you sort of mess, mess that up. Um, but again, that's something you would want to practice. I imagine not when you're going super quick. So again, he has like a little kind of skull here, a few other things, All right? A little loin cloth pouch thing. And he has, I'm going to put it this way, I think, maybe, or 
Let's flip. See what that's like. Boom. Yeah, boom. And then you kind of had this. Yeah. Sort of stuff. Some teeth and bones and bits and pieces on his little necklace there, which I thought was kind of kind of cool. And he had so I'm just kind of redrawing this character. Um, he had this some kind of thing that he's carrying on his on his back, maybe some kind of bone cudgel, something like that. So we're gonna go four minutes left, and I feel like we're kind of there from a from a character design standpoint. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, is just finesse secondary form um, construction. You know, see if I can build some of that stuff out a little bit more. You know, I feel like I, I noticed that the edge edge of that sort of face is a little bit loose, right? Let's see if we can find and construct some of this nose business. And again, just thinking about where some of these lines that um, I might use to kind of add some tone and stuff will go. Um, also, I need to think about what happens with this mouth, right? Like, how big is it? Because we've got these teeth here. Boom, boom. And, yeah, then the kind of lip comes out, then under. And he's kind of got the chin here that, again, his kind of jowls and stuff go over. We've got... Boom. That going there, and this going here. So again, you know, just sort of putting in some of that structure. We'll refine it. That took me a minute. Um, what else have we got that we can do to make our life easier? Um, I'll think about, you know, where to put those little hands and claws and things. Because, um, yeah, that's the kind of thing that can can get you if you try and make that up. So I'm going to have him with these kind of splayed little cat-like paw things. And again, I feel like this arm might be a little bit whoop, lesser. L for lesser. Let's grab this guy. I feel like it's. I feel like again, this, this has gotten quite low. Let's go Control um, T um, Alt, and I place the transform point near the shoulder and then if we hold down alt and shift that allows us to kind of scale from that point and just make it a little bit bigger until boom I feel like it's kind of in the right spot got one minute and 40 left and I'm gonna try and use it to just think about where that tail is gonna go right uh, think about I'm thinking about the overlaps the tangents where it would connect from an anatomical point of view and here he has kind of pants that are a little bit ragged which is a total lazy design thing that I always do but hey if it works it works and next with the last minute to go let's think about what kind of feet he has so I think I'm, I'm sort of looking for again he has three three toes there. So again, I'm going to use center point. Here's where foot one is. I'm going to sort of, you know, think about the arc, right? This is where that right back of the foot is here. And this is just blobs, but stuff really helps, right? We've got this little toe here. We've got a big toe and then got another toe here, right? Um, and then if we were to sort of, you know, draw a, draw a shadow or something like that, right? We can think about where that shutter kind of would be. Um, now again, something I want to try and do is, is um, you know, add a little bit of, add a little bit of a background here. Again, this is probably ambitious and silly slash stupid to try and do, but I do feel like oh, there goes the timer start stop and we'll start that again because we're not messing around um, again put a few sort of again because he's a toad goblin put a few sort of lily pads right in the distance 
and uh, again think about you know what's in the background there now again that can be like oh that's like a you know that that takes a little bit more time to draw but I do find that often saves time in the end now the other thing we can do is kind of move him up and use that again to kind of you know help us create a few of those sort of shapes in the in the foreground right and um, again maybe think about some sort of movement in the background don't know we'll see again um, one of the good things about just let me start this and before I start yapping uh, yeah, it's super easy in a demo to be like oh if I just talk um, then it's okay but no, it's not because the timer is going. We've still got, we've only got 14 minutes to finish this one. Uh, so is that? I think that is the right pencil. Yep. Um, and often, yeah, I forget which which pencil I use. You know, uh, I have to sort of go back here. Um, you know, I forget like a whole bunch of stuff. Um, where are? Here's here's the lines for that one. So here is the. Lines where are they? No, no, they're, they're here. Are they? Or oh, here they are. There we are. So if we kind of like drag them up, right? So this is sort of what the lines would have looked like, um, you know, in the beginning. So I'm just seeing like, is that the right pencil size? Is that the right thing? I think it is. And I also think that you know I did this um, with a full, with fully. 100% um, opacity. So let's try that again. Again, that was a huge waste of time, but uh, that's that's the effect I want. And I feel like these lines are darker than this one. I don't think those lines were dark enough. So I'm going to try that. All right, make sure we're on the right layer. Got 12 and a half minutes left. Some texture to that nose. So yeah, just these kind of little squinty eyes. Again little bit of a rough skin effect cool so it's um it's a lot easier and this is one of the things that I, I, I do often struggle with is again I really have put a lot of effort into trying to move my style towards something that is more about sort of clean one and done lines but whenever I look at those pencil sketches you know I do see that there's so much subtlety right if we sort of just quickly grab there's just so much subtlety there that's so easy to do with pencil that you know um, with, with this kind of clean line stuff is is a little bit more tricky All right, boom, boom, and again, he has like there is some sort of structure to this, right? That's worth sort of putting in. Again, the idea here is he kind of has these, right? We're sort of seeing the teeth here. All right. So a big challenge overall with this, um, you know, with this transition from, you know, the pencil sort of sketch, which which had its own methods for succeeding, methods for looking good, methods for working, let's say. Um, you know, it's like, how do I bring that same idea to this 
type of drawing here. So here we've got this rope guy, right? That's kind of coming in here. And oh, let's make that eraser smaller. Yeah, so maybe that's like a big sort of rope here, and his neck is kind of digging into it a bit. Let's um let's get this stuff happening. So again, create a bit of a feather, right, as we sort of try and transition some of these things into each other. Uh, anyway, I forget what I was saying. Um, yeah, one, one, of, one of the tricks is to figure out kind of how to make some of those subtler forms transform themselves into sort of stronger marks, right? So there's like subtle changes in the form from the um, pencil drawing and it's like well how does that work here what are we what are we doing you know how do we simplify that and here's where again things become a little bit more sketchy if if this was more of a finished illustration probably there would be little details like this where you know I, I try and think about these these like little ropes and things wrapping around a little bit more right try and add some form add more structure whereas when we are you know just kind of moving a little bit quicker some of that stuff kind of by by default has to just get done really quick right otherwise uh, yeah you kind of lose the the time game um, and again these are getting sort of quite Quite harsh. I think I, I think I should have done these with like a slightly softer hand. Again, often tightening up a bit to get those lines working. So see again, um, and that is a good. That is a really good indication. I often find of, you know, how how loose am I? How how good is everything working? You know, am I sort of tightening up to make particular lines? And uh, this guy does have stereotypical um, wrist wraps. There's, there's lots of reasons why those sort of exist, right? I mean, the, the, the wrist is one of those sort of tricky things to draw. Um, and it's also, you know, when we're designing things for games, often you will have, you know, you want to sort of swap out different models for the hands and um, stuff. And you, you want like a nice, um, you want a nice way to kind of hide the transition. Right, can be the same for, for sort of heads, right? You know, if, if you've got a nice sort of collar or something like that, that you can kind of hide the transition from different um, heads, um, different head variations and stuff in there. So again, that, that hand is not the best, but it's the best I can do with this amount of time. Because what are we at? Oh, we've got six minutes to go. I've been talking too much. Um, got this. Boom, boom. Right again. I feel like that's a little bit harsh. Um, boom. But again, you know, it's often this. Uh, you know, the, the push, the pressure that makes me, you know, just kind of put some lines in there and, you know, see what happens. Don't give this guy a little bit of a sort of scaly back. Very subtle 
indication that you know again maybe there's some kind of some form there or something and uh, yeah I noticed on the, on the original drawing he had quite sort of lumpy sort of skin there right basically sort of spiky on the original one it was yeah it was kind of spiky I think this needs to be a bit lumpy too on this one I'm making it a bit more lumpy get that done boom, boom. got four minutes to go what else do we need to do we need to do this thing try to relax breathe don't tighten up don't rush so yeah I might go a little bit silent for the uh, next few minutes as we try and this happening because the real the real challenge will be getting the um, backgroundy stuff done because that's pretty I might dig into my coloring time a little bit, but I think that will be okay. And again, when we're sort of rushing, I, I find it's th this is where you are more likely to build style and you know, effective style that actually does what you want. It's, uh, you know, as you find ways to be quick without being messy. Much more likely to have interesting things happening. Let's see if we can get that hand there, claw. Claw, 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 um, I feel like if this bit sort of comes out a bit. All right. Um, there we go. Good enough, hopefully. All right, what's happening with these little feet? Claw. 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 Uh, Claw, 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 claw. Again, almost like little kind of bird feet, which is a bit weird. I don't know. We'll see. Might want to make them bigger later on. Um, cool. And then we got the tail. Tangent. Watching tangents. Boom. Boom. Oh, yeah. That tail needs to be way more gnarly. Um, again, maybe a few indications of something. So, yeah, I feel like that's uh, probably where we need to do it. I've got 15 seconds left. Let's make a, a new layer under there and think about how to handle this. Oh, there we go. Hit it again and here we can add.
add some sort of lilies or little things. Again, this will be super, super rough. <laughs> right, it's like, uh, uh, yeah, and, and again, and again um, you know, when I sort of put that in, that's, uh, you know, something I've sort of done before, these kind of lily pond things. So I'm like, yeah, I kind of know how that works. Right, I kind of know how it's gonna, gonna color. a good way to kind of show some depth make sure we're on the right layer yep it's always like doing silly stuff like making sure this isn't on the right layer where yeah, a lot of these uh, attempts at doing quick stuff end in uh, failure <laughs> all right um again playing around probably spending too much time little thing there there again they're kind of climbing up mm. Nah, let's just keep that away. All right. And again, a adding a bit of like sort of, you know, nothing sketchiness can, can often sort of help help that. Um, help the, the other sort of loose stuff that's not that good sort of work out. All right, so this stuff is going to be quite um, faded out, I think. Uh, yeah, all right, let's try that. Let's see how we go, because again, we, we're running out of time. Um, so all that's going to happen here is basically we're just going to create a little halfway up. little background thingy let the actions do their work okay let's make this something like that we've got the same thing boom boom select that Q for quick mask quick mask let's join these things up with the pencil tool where else do we have gaps Boom, put a gap there, boom, done. Run the same action, and that'll give us a similar effect. All right, so we've got those lines. Let's um, put them away. Let's group this stuff. So now we've got a very sort of simple, right, simple look. We're going to have a sort of a signature somewhere down there and I do find something where we got 10 minutes Ooh, yeah so what what's the color scheme right like the, I guess that's the that's the key um, I mean I, I kind of like the idea of him being sort of green right you know and it, it's sort of I guess maybe we could you know look at some of these green sort of colors that were created here and this is often, you know, what I do if I'm, uh, no, I need to get into a proper thing in order to select that. Photoshop doesn't let you select colors if you're on an adjustment layer or something, or a hidden layer sometimes. Um, so, yeah, ag again, not 100% sure exactly of how that will kind of turn out, but let's, um, let's put in some of the other colors we kind of know here. 
feel like he could be a little bit more gray. What else have we got? Yeah, kind of got. And um, if you're going really quick, it, it does really help to have a plan from a sketching um, color point of view. That will allow you to be a lot rougher with things. I never really added form to that, did I? That top, there's like a line that should be there. Oh, well. Get this. Get this thing. Boom. Maybe other. Let's think about adding some lighter pants. So again, you know, because I used up a tiny bit of time extra on, you know, the background, uh, you know, I'm probably not going to get a chance to play around with these colors as much. It's it's mostly a matter of just sort of putting stuff in. Oh, duh. That's where that should be. Um... So again, the idea is sort of ropes and things are red, redder, more saturated. So it's just paint by numbers at some point, and we'll see what we get. Again, these are either sort of teeth or bones. And this is where often putting a lot of that texture over the top that you, know, you see me do, that um, you know has a real, real benefit because uh, it will smooth out a lot of those little sort of details. Right? Just might try and add a little bit of tone to that to that nose again around the eyes. So you see, I'm like quickly changing opacities. Playing around with that, to, you know, use the same red, but just you know, make the nose not quite as bright. There we go. That looks interesting. Let's make this again feel like a. Oh, come on, feel like a bone handle. All right, that bit can be like that. Um. Oh. There we go. We've got more claws down here. Claw, 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 claw. Um, so yeah, now quickly, what I'm going to do while I'm on this layer, let's turn contiguous off, let's get all the green. And what I'm going to do is create a hue saturation for just the green. I'm not actually going to use it just yet. What I'm going to do is make a right let's go shift control d all right get that back here i'm going to create a second sort of tonality all right and the idea is maybe some of these bumps are a little bit darker than everything else um, again i can always modify you know what this actually looks like later on Realized I still need to add this. How much time we've got? Six minutes. Alright. Um burn as well. Deselect. So now we're back on the normal thing. Um then have these guys be a little bit of a different sort of tone um, what am I missing I think I think that's enough for now um, what we could also do is again sort of select this again minus that and hide I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna create a slightly less saturated kind of like undertone 
here as well. Right, so he's got that kind of more fleshy belly. So it's creating, you know, some tonality here. We can wash this out. We can sort of turn this down later if, if we want. It's just, uh, it's going to be there because I, I think it'll add a little bit of interest. Cool. So color-wise, all right, we sort of got a, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a sort of a warm green here. So I'm just going to basically see if we can create a fairly simple monotone image. All right, we sort of got something like, you know, a little bit more like this. And... Right, I'm like, can we have a gradient? Is that going to work? Let's have greener stuff. Anyway, e either way, I can get rid of that later. A little bit more green. And again, we can, you know, grade all this stuff down, play around with it later. Let's, um,. Make this kind of rock again, more of like a rocky kind of color green here. Because it can see we're just being super rough with it. How many minutes? Oh, three minutes. Uh oh. Probably gonna go over a few minutes on this. And, uh, you know, again, it's always just a matter of like refining, you know, how long these things take. Boom, boom, boom. So here's where, again, I could probably slow down a little bit and be a little bit more accurate. It would probably save me in the end. But we'll see. What we'll see is, you know, is this idea of adding a, adding a background gonna gonna be worth it right is it actually um, is it actually gonna make things better or worse <laughs> um, all right so we've got this sort of background let's go to airbrush oh, I don't need to flip airbrush oh man that went over that's no good all right so we kind of Wash that out. All right. And with the thing, let's see if we can get some of that sort of texture going in there. Boom. And, um, Again, what we do is put slight so here we can you know pull that saturation down if we want pull it up if we want again can, can play around with that later again one minute left so often you know if we just put a simple gradient up there that can help you know, adjust things a little bit and put something there. So we've got the airbrush. Let's see if adding some of this kind of atmosphere right kind of helps. And um can be good to kind of, you know, have you know, if we sort of have this here, again probably go a few minutes. Sort of over you can kind of see like how much how much of that sort of atmosphere need to put that airbrush way down how much of that atmosphere we sort of got there let's put oh, there we go so we'll put it on again see how many minutes we go over again you don't have to be like you know completely 
crazy about, you know, always getting 100% um, right on the time. It, it just needs to be pretty close. That's how I do it anyway. Um, let's do again some of these kind of rougher particles and things. Same sort of stuff that we've got there. Boom. Let's erase a bit of this. Another layer. And again, I'll sort of you know, erase some of this stuff out. That's pretty much it. And, and I kind of like, you know, I just like doing this because again, it, it, it sort of makes, it makes a lot of the sort of roughness in the, in the line work sort of disappear a bit, right? We, we, we start to kind of notice that stuff a little bit less. Again, just putting it down so we can sort of take it away. And then we'll sort of think about let's uh let's bring some of those levels back. Alright, pull the darks down. Alright, pull those down. Oh. And now we can think about adjusting the the overall sort of color and stuff right like how do we how do we want this to to appear push some of the the warmth right as we have in the other one and then we can push some of those blacks down a little bit but you can see again we sort of faded out things a little bit more than I would like, so we've probably sort of done that here also. So this is where we can, you know, when we're in the middle of it, we can you know, go through there. The other thing I can do, just quickly, boom, new layer behind. Let's, um, you know, just do super simple black at sort of low opacity, and, and what I'm going to do is just sort of ground the character a little bit right so we're just sort of pushing that shadow there right and, and adjusting the, the the feeling of the of the background again nothing sort of epic right and, and trying to sort of stay away from it and be be subtle but that just kind of gives us a little bit of control over you know what's happening right maybe there's some sort of shadows playing around because it, it, it can be tricky to kind of make stuff happen with just sort of gradients and, and airbrushes, right? Like a little bit of a little bit of something is, is often kinda useful. But yeah, anyway, that's uh that's probably probably all we've got. Um again I could like sort of push those lines a little bit more if I feel like they're sort of getting lost a bit we can right, again kind of pull this down a bit yeah i feel like that's we don't need don't need most of that now yeah so anyway that's the that's the basic idea that was probably pulling things down too so yeah i just i don't want to sort of lose the the impact of the lines. So another one. Yeah. So yeah, cool. Anyway, that's about it. If you're curious about, you know, any of the little bits and pieces I'm using here or, you know, how I'm sort of doing this, let me know and um 
I can sort of, you know, answer questions and things in the comments, but most of it is in that free quick start guide. That's why I made it so I don't have to answer, you know, basic things all the time. Um, if you go check that out, it'll give you a pretty good indication of, you know, how I'm doing all of the things that I'm doing. So yeah, go check that out. But uh, yeah, other than that, I'm just, you know, going to play around with this color um, a little bit, see if we can kind of make some interesting sort of color arrangements or, or things happen. Again, don't want to do too much of that, but I do want to kind of bring the the overall sort of warmth of that character so he kind of jumps out of that page a little bit more. Um, and again, you know, I think it can be, you know, go good to just sort of bring that bring that up make it like a little bit more again I just feel like uh, again playing off that warm um, character off the cool background is like a it's like a simple sort of solution we can we can employ um, and again you can always go control I right. and we can kind of you know erase that a little bit in the background right make the character kind of jump forward a bit we can you know pull the saturation down we can again make things feel a little bit more green I feel like green is is you know is is kind of good for the character because uh, you know he is meant to be a little you know little sort of frog toad goblin guy <laughs> which is kind of uh, he needs to be maybe a little bit sort of green greener than and some of the others um, and yeah you can go and you know keep playing around with colors that's the kind of thing I normally do here but it's actually much more effective I found if you're sort of getting stuck doing this uh, which I often am is just you know once that timer goes I think we're sort of yeah we're, I'm sort of six minutes over now once that timer goes just um, you know sort of stop and then maybe spend that five minutes uh, later on you know what I mean coming coming back from it and making sure that you, we've had some time to to really kind of think over you know what's wrong what's what's not wrong you know what what's good what's uh, what's bad etc um, that's often like a really sort of good nice simple way to do it anyway that's all I've got thanks for hanging out talking about drawing catch you around <laughs>